Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the most hyped card in the history of Magic, and this is as a percentage-wise, Narset. Uh, Narset Transcendent, um, I'll have an image of her right here, or here, is a very, is a card that was hyped to oblivion and back. So the pre-order price was $48 and like 80 cents or something. That was the highest, that was TCG Mids pre-order. Today it is $8.81 and it doesn't look like it's going to stop from falling more and more and more. Narset, so the non-foil at one point was almost $50. Like I'll have a little chart and you can take a look at it. Uh, now it's eight. It's less than $9 and the hype around it was unreal. Who was hyping the card? People who wanted to sell the card. Who were those people? Um, big vendors. I'm not going to call them out by name, but you can, you know, assume that it's all the big ones. They had their writers compose these very interesting deck lists and say how awesome Narset would be in modern and how she would be so playable and standard and how she would dominate the format and how she started with six loyalty, you could go up to seven, you could draw a card if you got lucky. Yes. So the reason I'm making this video now is there's likely to be hyped cards in Oath of the Gatewatch. Uh, and what are we gonna look for? What should you look for when you're hyping, when you're trying to determine if a card's price is inflated via hype that is not real? Narset is the prime, prime, prime example of something that is hyped beyond belief. So first of all, a Planeswalker. Planeswalkers generally fall in price. Gideon is the exception, but Kiora, Obnixlis, they have both fallen pretty much off, off the map. Uh, next, you would look at mythics. Uh, you would look at mythics like the Adrazi, and you would look at, you know, mythics that, you know, even the foil mythics of the Expeditions. So everyone was saying, oh, Expeditions would, you know, do really well. They will long-term wise, but not when people are opening cases after cases of the stuff. Or is Oath of the Gatewatch gonna be any different? I feel like less cases will be open just because it's a gimmick. It's, a, it's the same gimmick again. And the problem with a gimmick is you can only use it a few times before it gets lame. Like uh, the Expedition Lands, it's a gimmick. Um, it's not like they made a new creative design or they did something new and unique. Uh, they took something that people liked for Art Lands. They took something people liked at that time, Fetch Lands. I, I mean, some of the Over the Gate Watch, like I scratch my head and say, why do we need Mana Confluence? Why do we need Tech Ads? Like, does anyone really want, like if you could replace Tech Ads with like, Another land, let's say a fast land. Maybe there's a black, red, flat, fast land. Uh, what is it? Black cleave cliffs that is worth quite a sum of money. Maybe we do the fast lands and then get rid of the tech edges and or even ghost quarter. Right? Come on, ghost quarter is kind of expensive in foil. I have a foil ghost quarter. Didn't realize what the price was. It's around twenty bucks. I was like, uh, my foil ghost quarter is from Descension, by the way. I replaced that of those. Uh, I have no idea what they were worth, um, but they are very good in modern. I just didn't realize that anyone would pay $20 for them. Anyway, besides the point is they could have picked better cards this particular time around, but when you look at hype, you look at something that is mythic or super mythic, and you look at something that's a planeswalker, and then you look at the Drazi, and you look at uh, various cards like Bring to Light was hyped, Ruinous Path was hyped. A lot of cards were hyped and they went straight down the tank. So if you do make a pre-order, I'd suggest you not picking one card. Picking multiple cards is not gonna work if 99% of those cards will go down. So even if you pick two cards and you got one card right, the other card went down. You picked four cards, you got one card right, the other three cards went down. So you're going to play this pre-order game, which is a very fun game. I, I love playing the pre-order game, as a lot of you know. You have to only pick one card. Picking four, five, ten cards, unless you're going to play with them. But even if you're playing with them, you just wait until they drop in price. 
uh, is not the way to do it. It's not a mutual fund where you can pick 10 things and then hope that they go up in price. No, no, the whole stock market is going down in price for Magic pre-orders. The entire pre-orders, they're just gonna crash and burn. But you have one gem. You may have one gem like Gideon that did go up in price a little bit. Uh, my friend Steven had opened, I mean, I guess you guys saw on the channel, but he opened literally, I think there was like 12 Gideons he opened and he got rid of them real fast. And he got the rid of them for like $35 in trade, which was very good. And he got more expeditions and all of that stuff. I actually need to talk to him because I want to pick up um, some of the uncommons, if you will, and some of the other stuff. I wanna, I wanna buy some of the stuff from him, but we will see because I actually don't need anything because I, I myself have opened a lot of the <laughs> Battle for Zendikar. Anyways, um, when you look at hype, you, you gotta look and you gotta say who is hyping the card up, who's writing this article. Does this person work for a company that would be interested in selling this card for? more money than it might be worth. And what is their purpose? What is the point of this deck list? Is this deck list even reasonable? Uh, does it make sense that we're five color allies so we can sell some new ally card? And yeah, so I would definitely say that when you're doing pre-orders and when you're looking at hype and you're looking at something like a Narset or a Kiora, wait unless you have a gut feeling. Um, sometimes I get this gut feeling that I look at cards like Elspeth or Voris and I just say, hmm, this card seems like really good for its current price point. And normally it's a card around $10 on eBay. And that card can jump to 20. So that type of jump is reasonable. A card that jumps, but a Gideon jump is less common. When a card starts at 25 or 20, and they can jump to 35. That's not, that's much riskier in my opinion. A Narsa jump is impossible. If a card starts at $50, what is it going to jump to? Like $70? Like even Liliana of the Veil at one time was $20. So even if you were going to jump to like 80 or 70 right now, there was a point where you could have picked her up as many as you wanted for $20, which I'll get into my next favorite speculation later this week. Bye guys.